Bishop's Castle Primary School is a small school set in rural Shropshire. Victoria Palmer teaches a Year 2 class, which includes some young Year 3s and the oldest Year 1s. She's familiar with linking the arts into other curriculum areas in her teaching, but has never tried to link dance with science. She has asked dancer Rachel Freeman to help plan and teach a lesson about the human body. Rachel regularly goes into schools to work with teachers in this way, but linking dance with science is something she's never attempted before either. In their meeting today, how are they going to bring the science and dance together in one lesson? Hello Rachel. Hi Victoria, how are you doing? Lovely to see you again. What, what bits of science are you looking at? Well, we're doing um, our cells and the body. Oh, OK. So um, we've been looking at um, similarities and differences between themselves. Uh -huh. So things like eye colour, uh, hair colour, who's the tallest. And I'd like to do something on exercise and how the body responds to exercise. So I thought that would fit in well that with the dance. That's perfect, yes. yeah. And also body parts. OK. Knowing what the different body parts are. Do you know the body parts sticking to the floor? No. You get them to stick different parts of the body to the floor. Right. So there's named parts that can touch. So it might be two hands and one foot, and they can play around with different ways of doing that. I like the sound of that. So we could do that one. That would sort of get them focused. The sticking oh. body. What did you call it? Sticking body um, parts. To the floor. To the floor. Stick to floor. And then you can develop that with a partner. It's quite nice working in oh, partners. Oh, that would be good. So I could take perhaps some photographs at that point. Yeah. And yeah, then I could use them later on and we could yeah. refer back to those body parts. Yeah. It'd be useful to get them moving really quickly and then checking in on how their body feels after that. The skin temperature, mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. could be feeling the skin. Mm -hmm. And we could measure their skin temperature as well. Uh -huh. So we could measure perhaps temperatures at two different times yeah. then to see the difference and then yeah, compare that would be them. Good. So that would okay. bring in the, um, the science one then. Right. Hands on and investigating. So with all the planning in place, it's last minute preparations. Supporting the lesson today is teaching assistant Christine Wormsley. Everybody shuffle in a little bit. All right. We've got a slightly unusual lesson in that we're going to be doing science and dance together in the same lesson. We're going to be thinking about your body parts and how your body changes when you exercise. So it's when we're dancing today. I'd like everybody to stand up. And just for a moment, we're going to hold hands and we're going to close our eyes. And I want you to just have a little think about the temperature of the hands that you are holding. Are they warm? Are they cold? Are they hot? OK, now we're going to open our eyes and let go of hands. OK, now we're going to put our hands on our faces. I want you to have a little think about the temperature of your hands and your face. Are your hands cold and your face warm? Or are your hands warm and your face cold? <laughs> they might be different. Now we're going to touch our feet. Feel your feet. And have a little think about the temperature of your feet. Are your feet colder than your face? Are your feet hotter. colder than your hands or hotter? Okay, and stand back up and give your hands a shake. So, how could we measure the temperature of our hands and our feet or our faces more accurately? What would we need to do to measure that, Finn? Um, we could use a thermometer. We could use a thermometer. <laughs> Right, that's what we're going to do. We're going to measure our temperatures of our foreheads, all right, to get a more accurate measurement. So if you could just sit down, and I'm going to ask you to record that. So here are our recording sheets, and we're going to be measuring your temperature before you start to dance. So you're going to be recording that here. Why do you think I've chosen a green post-it? <gasps> today. Why do you think we use a green post-it, Neve? Because um, it shows a green light on the thermometer. That's right. It reminds us that it's the green section we're looking for on the thermometer today. Right, 
now you've measured your temperature more accurately, can you tell me how hot you were? How hot was your head, Jasmine? I was 36. 36 degrees centigrade. What do you think is going to happen to your temperature when we're doing our dancing? Is it going to stay at 36? No. What do you think is going to happen? I think it will get hotter because we're um, going to um, getting it be warming our bodies up. Have a little chat to the person next to you about what else you think might change. Uh, but when you run around, you'll be like really hot. So you said you might get hotter and you might get a bit sweaty. And your muscles, what did you say? Your muscles might get stronger. Uh -huh. You get fitter. You're going to get fitter. Anything else? When your heart beats, that means you're running faster. Now that Victoria has found out some of the children's predictions, Rachel begins the warm-up, relating it to different body parts. Tummy. Give your tummy a rub. And your legs. So bending your knees. Give your legs a really good rub. And give your feet a tap. Rub the back of your legs. And your bottoms. Good. Let's stretch our noses into the middle. Let's stretch one foot to the outside. Let's shake our hands up high. Shake our hands down low. Up high. Down low. Into the middle. Out to the back. A bit faster. High. Low. Her middle. Back. High. Low. Her middle. Back. Lovely. And relax. Rachel wants to know what the children have learnt so far. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a little bit of a think about some words, sort of movement words, body words. Victoria is noting these down for follow-up ideas. So has anybody got anything that they can remember? Yeah. It was twizzling one of them when we moved our head. Turning around. Turning around, so turning. Stretching. Stretching. We did stretching with our bodies, didn't we? While Rachel is getting the children to stick different body parts to the floor, Victoria is using the opportunity to photograph this for follow-up. The only thing that's allowed to touch the floor is your bottom and one foot, which means you have to balance, good. The only thing that's allowed to touch the floor is your knees and one elbow. Good balancing there, good. Your hip and one hand. That's your back. Your hip is at the side, isn't it? Next, they move on to the idea of pairing up to stick different body parts together. Everybody find a partner. I want you to have just your elbows touching each other. But it might be one elbow, it might be two, but you're touching your partner's elbow. OK, let's try back to back, touching your partner's back. Good. Feet and head. So your feet are going to touch your partner's feet. Very nice here, that's lovely. The class are now asked to move around as slowly as they can for 30 seconds and then stop and listen to their breathing. As a comparison, Rachel and Victoria now want the children to move as quickly as possible. You're going to be standing in a place and you're going to have a little look around the room and decide of a different place to be. I think I want to be over here. So I'm going to run over here. I'm going to stretch up high. I'm going to go right down to the floor and I'm going to stand up again. And then I'm going to change my mind again because I want to be over here. What do I do when I get here? Stretch up and then... I'm going to go right the way down. And then stand up and look for it now. Stand up. Okay. Everybody stand up. Ready? Off you go. Bring to a place. When you get there, reach up high. And again. I think you can do it a bit faster than that. Just 
where you are. Everybody close your eyes. Be very quiet. Let's just listen to what we can hear. <coughs> Feel your heartbeat. Feel your forehead. Which part of your body feels the hottest now? Um, my forehead. It still feels the hottest. How do you know that's the hottest, Phoebe? Because I, I felt it and it was hotter than all the other parts. How does your body feel compared to um, before we started? Alice? We felt colder. No, it's hotter because we've been moving around. If you look at your partner, do you notice anything different about their skin or their face? Um, Tegan? Um, Zoe, um, skin is red, but before she was white. Right. Why do you think that is? Because um, we've been moving, then we all heat up and then it's all red. What do you think would happen if we carried on exercises? Owen? They would keep getting redder and redder and redder. What about your breathing? <coughs> you'd, you'd keep breathing faster and faster and faster. Why do you think that would happen, Owen? <coughs> because you would be running and you wouldn't be taking much air in because you would be too busy running. Right, thank you. After all that exercise, the children measured their temperatures again. The class then do some cool down exercises ready for the plenary. These are some of the things you said about how your bodies moved while you were dancing. You were stretching with your bodies, stretching different body parts. What body parts were you stretching? We were stretching with our um, elbows and our heads. Baby. Our shoulders. Mm. Legs and arms. Legs and arms. <gasps> and noses. Your noses, yes. Fancy stretching your noses. That was fun, wasn't it? Your feet. Our feet. Your feet. Our arms. Your arms. So we were moving our bodies and we were feeling our temperature and then we measured our temperature. And we also measured our temperature after we'd been moving really quickly. What did you find out? The body heat and rise. How do you know that, Luke? Um, because um, when I was running around, um, I felt um, really sweaty, and before I was running around, um, I felt really cold. Did anything surprise you? No. Is there anything that happened that you didn't think would happen? Or perhaps things that happened that you had predicted would happen? I predicted that, um, that I would sweat, but um, I was actually quite surprised because I didn't sweat at all. I predicted that um, my <coughs> heart would beat faster, and it did. It did. So the class obviously enjoyed the lesson, and Victoria will be interested to know how effective this cross-curricular link of science with dance has been.